One six. Chlorine is a versatile element which forms a wide range of compounds. One example of a compound containing chlorine is vanadium 4 chloride. It reacts vigorously with water, forming a blue solution. Blue solution absorbs light of wavelength 610 nanometers. Calculate the energy in kilojoules per mole associated with this wavelength. I think this is a little bit of a gifty question, because all we're looking for is starting with a pen rather than a rubber on this one, okay? So E equals LHC over lambda from your data book, okay? And then we're just looking for LHC out of the data book. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd multiplied by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 uh, multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 8. Which if you've done a lot of these recently, you probably know those numbers off by heart. Okay. And then we just need to put in the wavelength. And the only thing about the wavelength we have to be careful about is it's in nanometers. This is in meters. So we have to put in the conversion which is also in the back of your data book. So as I say, I think a reasonable, almost gifty thing. Okay, do the calculation. 1.96 times 10 to the five, but because this is in joules, this is also in joules per mole, and we need it in kilojoules. So we need to convert that. 196 kilojoules per mole. And that's it. Uh, Morat scheme allowed you to go 196.29 or to go 196.3 or the 196 or even 200 if you went with significant figures okay right second part so that you can tell straight away this is a rates question like rate equation because you've got a data table with initial rates and concentrations so chloride chloride dioxide clo2 is used in water sterilization an experiment was carried out to determine the kinetics for the reaction between chlorine dioxide and hydroxide ions okay so we have an equation however don't be fooled by that these numbers here, the stoichiometry of the equation has nothing to do with your final rate equation. That is why we have this data set in the box. Okay, so to make it easier, I'm just going to call these reactions 1, 2 and 3, because the first thing you're asked to do is to determine the order of reaction with respect to the ClO2 and then the OH-. So if I use for ClO2, I'm going to use reactions 1 and 2, because the hydroxide ion is remaining the same, so therefore it's not an issue, but the, chlor the ClO2, the chloride dioxide, has gone from 6 times 10 to the minus 2 to 1.2 times 10 to the minus 1, so this has doubled. Okay, so then what I do is look at the rate. The rate over here, uh, 2.48 times 10 to the minus 2, has gone to 9.92 times 10 to the minus 2. That has not doubled. If I do the, the check in the calculation, this is multiplied by 4. So this is second order. Okay. For my OH minus, I am going to look at reactions 2 and 3, because again, my ClO2 is now staying the same, but my OH minus is going from 3 times 10 to the minus 2 to 9 times 10 to the minus 2. So what I've actually got here is a triple. So look at my rate. Rate goes from 9.92 times 10 to the minus 2 to 2.98 times 10 to the minus 1. So this has also tripled. So this has got a direct first order link. Now the reason I'm saying this is not particularly nice here is because that overall is giving you a third order reaction. And that's as bad as they go in terms of um, what you would be asked to work with. Write the overall rate equation. That's okay. Okay, so rate equals, just being really careful that we have a small k, I always do the loopy one, just to be clear that I'm not doing that with my big k's, so get rid of that. Okay, and we've got um, ClO2 squared and my OH minus concentration just as is. Okay, calculate the value for the rate constant including the appropriate units. So I'm just going to rearrange this equation that we've got our rate equals little k ClO2 minus, sorry, keep on saying 2 minus, O2 squared OH minus. Okay, we need to rearrange that so we can get to k. So k is your rate over your concentrations here. And I just take always the first one. So here we go. We're going to use the data from that first equation here. Spin it back down again. Um, apologies if that's a little causing a vertigo. Okay, so 2.48 times 10 to the minus 2 
and 6 times 10 to the minus 2 squared times 3 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, plug all that in and you get by rounding to 230. Okay, the mark scheme allowed you to go 229.63, uh, 229.6, and again allowing you to go to your rounding with significant figures. Okay, the thing is that we also, that's one mark because this bit is the second mark, appropriate units. It is third order overall. Now you can derive the units by plugging in the units to this equation. I find that often I make little mistakes doing that, so I prefer just to have learnt it. So I'm looking for L squared ML minus 2 S to the minus 1. It doesn't matter what order you put those in, but you need to have them all correct. And that's the question.